How many like that word this morning? Change. Anybody? Have anybody here in the room that just walks into your living room and gets the inclination that things have been where they are for a little bit too long and you just begin to change things? Okay, I'm seeing husbands doing this number. Tom is raising, he's being honest with me. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Change. It's not a word that we necessarily like, nor is it something that we like walking through, especially when that change is unexpected. Now, to be clear, I just kind of made the joke a moment ago about the, the uh, moving the couches or the furniture or a picture or what have you. That's not the kind of change we're going to be talking about this morning. We're going to be talking about a different sort of change. We're going to be talking about the kind of change that literally changes your world. We're going to talk about the kind of change that causes disruption in just about every area of life. I'm talking about the kind of change that redefines your normal. We all know normal, or at least we used to. We all know what normal typically feels like. Defined, if we look to see what Webster has to say regarding this word normal, they would say this, that normal is the usual, the average or typical state or condition. As an adjective, normal is conforming to a standard, the usual, typical, or expected way of life. Normal is something that I I think, if we're honest, in most days, we expect to happen, right? When you wake up um, in the morning, have your prayer time, get the coffee going, I think, if we're honest, most of us in that that time as we're processing the day kind of hope that it's going to be a, a normal day. Yes? No? Maybe so. Unless you just live for that unexpected blind side. <laughs> I'll pray for you. Because that's not me. Normal is what we expect most days of the week. Normal is the life that we are often drawn to. Why? Because it's normal. It's what we're used to. Normal is a place of, of comfort. Yeah. It's a place of convenience. We know what to expect. Normal is our routine, our way of life, and our place of security and place of refuge. The problem, though, with normal church is that it can change. And as we have seen in the last couple years, it can change rapidly and dramatically. Normal can be redefined. Normal can become a thing of the past. Now, we know today that a change in normal can be a problem, but it also can be a solution to a problem. This morning we begin a new series called New Normal. It's based off a book written by Pastor John Lindell. It's a book I would highly encourage you to pick up. Just the prologue itself, I believe, will bless your life tremendously. New Normal by John Lindell. In fact, last time I looked on Amazon, I think a hardcover copy of it was $3.50. Not a big investment, but it's going to help your, your walk. It's going to grow you in your faith with God. And I believe this series, this book, is very timely. Why? Because normal has changed, church. Hello? In fact, I would say normal was thrown out the window, caught in the wind, and blown completely out of sight. Hello? And we are still feeling the effects. We're still feeling... The, the, the pressure, if you will, of change. We're still feeling the effects of COVID-19 uh, as this pandemic created a new level of fear and, uh, that was a, a new level of encouraged uh, social separation. Man, I got to go here for just a second. The, the situation with Ukraine, with Russia, is a very, very, very serious situation indeed. Amen? And this, I think it was last week, if I'm getting my timeline right, there was a bulletin put out by by the White House talking about, and, and God forbid we ever move to this, don't, don't mishear my heart, but put out a bulletin 
um, talking about basically how to survive a nuclear event here in the United States. How many, did anybody see this report? I had to look it up to see if it was, it was true. And in the instructions, it talked about, how, how many remember the, let me back up, the, 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 was it the 50s, the 60s, the Cuban Missile Crisis, when the duck and cover thing, as if your desk was going to sur- save you, right? From a, well, this, this thing talked about going to a basement or going to a, uh, an underground deal, but it made sure in these instructions to include, don't forget your mask and don't forget the social distance while you're in the fallout shelter. I kid you not. Just... Personally, I think that would be the last thing on my mind if the sirens, God forbid we ever get to that level. Don't, don't mishear me on that. But this is shaking us up, church. Hello? The vaccine is a vaccine. I believe it's for each person to decide whether or not they want to receive it. But there is some spiritual conditioning that's going on in our culture surrounding this event. That's another sermon, another time. We feel the effects of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Pray, pray, pray for God to do a work only God can do in that situation today. Pray for the refugees. Pray for both sides of of people on the conflict. There are Russians that are getting hurt uh, in this as well that have nothing to do with the conflict itself. It's a terrible situation, church. And I want to go back to what I just made uh, a mention of, the the phrases... um, the fact that uh, a national leader used the phrase, I will go nuclear, should really concern us today. Church, I keep telling myself that I never thought I would see such things take place in my life. And you know what? I'm really getting tired of telling myself that. Anybody else? Just, I mean, it's just been a whirlwind of change. The question that I want to ask you this morning is how are you handling the change? Here we're talking about these national situations, these, nat- uh, these national crises that we're, we're facing, but let's bring this in a little bit more personal today. We know that this season has caused a lot of personal change for a lot of families. We know that jobs have been completely thrown upside down. We know that the economy has been thrown upside down. We see all these things unraveling before us. And I want to ask this question, how are you handling the change? Who are you looking to to help you with this change? Pastor Carly shared her heart a moment ago talking about running to God. Church, I pray that that would be our response today. I pray that in this instability that we find ourselves in as a world that we would go to our God who never changes, that we would run to God who is our foundation, who is our security, who is our refuge this morning. Here's the deal. Normal might be a place of comfort, but comfort can become dangerous in and of itself. Normal might be our routine, but that doesn't mean that our routine was good. Normal might be a way of life, but that way of life can be misleading. Normal might be or might feel like a place of security and refuge, but church, listen to me. That feeling can be deceiving. I want you to hear me clearly this morning. God is the only source of security, refuge, protection, provision, direction, and strength that will never change today. And as the world changes around us, church, I pray that our normal routine is to remain faithful to the God who never changes. This morning, I want to look back at the Old Testament. We're going to look at a story where normal had just passed away. Today, we look at the life of Joshua. We're going to look at a pivotal point in his life. We're going to see that Joshua had a choice to make. Would he do all that he could to restore the normal routine of the people who now followed him? Or would he step into the new reality that God had set before him? Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 is where we begin this morning. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. 
Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, I like these next two words, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. Moses was gone. Moses had died. Now talk about some big shoes to fill, church. Moses had led the people of God through some pretty crazy stuff. He was their leader. He was known by all, and now he was gone. Their normal had been rocked. And I can only imagine what Joshua might have been feeling in this moment. The Jordan River in front of them. Normal or life as they knew it was now behind them. Joshua, he wasn't standing on that riverbank. He wasn't in that position just to take on the sights that day. He wasn't there to just listening to the flow of, of the water or take in the, the natural wild beauty of the area church he was there to lead the people from where they were into a land they had never been into a new normal the jordan river in this case was a boundary the jordan river was the end of the world as they knew it and we know that the people of god leading up to this point had spent a long time wandering in the wilderness they had learned a lot of hard lessons while they were there, but still for all the frustration and occasional boredom of those difficult years, even within the wilderness, there was a certain familiarity and predictability to those days as well, right? They had spent a long time in that season. Here's the deal, church. You can get used to anything, even the wilderness, And you can find a certain comfort and routine in dealing with the devil you know. I can't tell you how many folks I have talked to through almost 20 years of ministry. It'll be 20 years this May. That's crazy to think about. Thank you, Jesus. Folks that were living in severe dysfunctional situations, kids that were living in severe dysfunctional homes that saw... The, the, the way of life is normal because church, that's all they had ever known. That's all they had ever experienced. So why expect anything else? We can find a certain level of comfort and routine even in such situations. And I want us to remember something about this moment as we go back to Joshua here for a moment. This wasn't the first time they stood on the banks of this river. They had been here before. But their grasp of normal and their fear of what might be ahead kept them from missing out on the promises of God. Consider this this morning. When things get tough in their journey, as the Israelites were going through the wilderness, as things got tough, as they faced different situations, they wanted to go back to what they saw as normal. In fact, Numbers chapter 11 shows us an area where they wanted to go back to a position where they found themselves as slaves to the Egyptians. Verse 5 of Numbers 11 says, We remember the fish that we ate in Egypt at no cost. Just your freedom. Also the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this man. But they had forgotten in that position they were slaves. They were in a position where their freedom was gone. But yet that was normal for them. I want you to hear this today. Normal might just be the thing that is keeping you from experiencing what God is leading you to do. Normal might just be the thing that is keeping you in a holding pattern. Jeff, we talked about holding patterns last weekend. 
What were your comments to me regarding holding patterns? <laughs> it's been a week. You told me you don't ever want to get stuck in one because it's hard to get out. Yeah. Normal might be that holding pattern that's keeping you from moving forward. Normal might be the thing that God is trying to break you free from so that you can live in his promises. As they stood on that riverbank, I am sure that many of the younger Israelites considered the far side of the Jordan to be as unreachable as the other side of the moon. They only knew about the land on the other side through stories. But Joshua, the one who would lead them, the one who would help them cross over, he knew about the land from experience. Yes, he had been there before. He was one of the spies that had entered the land so many years prior. And since then, church, I can only imagine that he dreamed of it, that he wanted it. And even when the other spies said the battle is too great, Joshua and Caleb knew otherwise. God had led them there to this new normal, and when everybody else said it could not be done, Caleb and Joshua were the counter witnesses who said it must be done, and with God's help, we are the only ones that can do it. I've been saying from the pulpit for several weeks, months, even years, that I see nothing but the promises of God ahead for you individually. And for this church, I see God doing an amazing work here in the heartland. And church, listen to me. These promises that I speak of, these, these new things that I believe God is getting ready to do in and through us, these are not realities that we want to simply visit or vacation in. They are realities that we want to live, that we want to settle in. We want to settle in the promises of God. How many are with me today? We go to different areas for vacation. We go to the mountains or we go to, 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 to Missouri or you might go down to Texas or whatever. And you visit these areas that are really nice. Amen? You go to, I, I'm a mountain guy. I love just, just, the sounds, the, 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 the air. I don't know what it is about, about the Rocky Mountains, but I, I absolutely love that area. It's an area that I can go and I can visit from time to time. But I come home, back to normal, back to where we reside. And I want to also say this. I think the heartland is one of the most beautiful overlooked areas of the nation. As I tell you, you'll never see a sunrise or sunset quite like you'll see in the heartland anywhere else. Come on. Beautiful area. But the promises of God, this is not something that we just want to visit or vacation to. I don't know about you. I want to live in his promises today. Joshua now stands at the boundary and had a choice to make. Would he stay uh, where they were, or would they move into the new normal that was ahead? And this is the question that I want us to consider today. Are you willing to step into the promises that God has for you today, or will you allow normal to hold you back from experiencing what God has in store? And again, church, we're not talking about visiting. We're talking about living in these promises. So there's two things I want us to consider as we ponder that question. They are the same two things on the mind of Joshua. Number one, the promises of God. Let's go to Joshua 1. Let's look at verse 3 through 6. This is God talking to Joshua. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot. That's pretty cool. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. I like this. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. God told Joshua, it's time. Specifically, the two words, get ready. Because you are about to enter into the land, the land that would be given to them by God. Now this journey this morning, this venture into a new normal wasn't Joshua's idea, nor was it 
formed from any human conquest to secure a new territory for the people. The journey that was before them was orchestrated and put into motion by God, and that's critical, church. That's critical. Joshua wasn't standing on the riverbank to carry out his own agenda or his own opinion. He stood there as instructed by God. If we want to experience what God has in store for us, then we need to follow his instructions. Hello? It's awfully quiet in here this morning. Come on. We need to follow his instructions, even when those instructions, or I would say this, especially when those instructions go against our normal. God will call you out of your comfort zone. God will call you out of your place of convenience. God will call you out of the wilderness that you might find yourself in to go and experience the promises that he has before you. There was a work to be done in the promised land. God is preparing his people to go and do the work, but they had to make the choice to cross that river. This was God's plan, and it was a good plan. God has a plan for you, and it's a good plan. God has a plan for this church, and it's a good plan. Do you believe that this morning? Come on. And the passage that we just read a moment ago out of Joshua was incredible. God would give them this land everywhere. They set their foot would become their land, and no one could stand against them. Church, that's an incredible promise. Things were changing, and yes, the people had just experienced a great loss. Moses was gone, but sometimes these kind of changes can be what displaces a person and moves them forward in life. If you are like most people this morning, part of your life, maybe much of your life, has been spent in some kind of wilderness. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you felt like you were walking in circles? Come on, anybody ever been there? Turning around at the same dead ends? Perhaps in the face of the onslaught of changes, God is trying to help move you or shift you from the endless holding pattern and into a new promised, undiscovered country. God has a plan for you. And as we take on that plan, as we take that step of faith, as we move from what is known into the unknown, church, I pray that we will never lose sight of God's promises that are ahead. Joshua crossed that river, led those people with the promises of God on his mind. And right there is the key this morning. What is it that's on your mind today? Are his promises in the forefront? Or are your preferences in control? Are his promises leading the way? Or are you more partial to just staying where you are? I want to talk about God's promises just briefly this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 Verse 20 tells us that God's promises are no and never. Okay, we've got a little bit of... It's just quiet in here, guys. No, it tells us that God's promises are what? Yes and amen, which means you can take them to the bank, but a person must trust his promise in order to experience his promise. And I get it, church. It can be challenging to take that first step. It can be challenging to step out of that comfort zone. It can be challenging to leave that place of convenience. But listen to me. The promise that lies ahead is worth every step you take in God today. Joshua looked to the promised land not to the preferences that were behind. He didn't hold on to tradition. He looked forward to tomorrow. So he stretched out his foot and he took that first step. And not only had God given Joshua the promise, he also gave Joshua the pathway. I want to quickly, quickly, quickly look at Joshua 1, 7 through 9. He tells him, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn uh, from it uh, uh, to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. 
Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God made something very clear to his servant, something that must never be forgotten in the journey. God instructed Joshua to never turn away from the law that had been given to Moses. God's word, God's way was the way in which his promises would come. It was true for the Israelites then. It is true for us today, church. If we want to experience the promises of God in our lives, then we've got to follow the instructions that God has given us today. Hello? If we try to do it any other way, we'll miss out on what God has in store for us. We've got to let go and we've got to let God. We've got to trust his word. We've got to trust his teaching. We've got to make his word the foundation of of our lives. Leanne, if I could go ahead and have your help at the keyboard this morning. We've got to trust in the Word. But secondly, in this passage, following God into the promises also requires faith. Stay true to the faith and do not be afraid. Look at verse 9 again. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you Wherever you go, do not be afraid. Do not allow fear to override your faith. Church, how much fear has been spread in recent days, months, and years? How fearful have we become because of everything that has gone on in our society and around this world? Fear has caused people to shelter in. Fear has caused people to turn against one another. Fear has caused people to divide and to separate. And I want to be clear in this again this morning. I encourage everybody to make the choices that you need to make for your own personal health care. But I challenge you today make sure that fear isn't in the driver's seat today. Hello? Make sure that it's faith that's leading the way. Make sure that it's faith that is leading the way. And never forget that the Lord our God is with us every step of the way. Do you believe that this morning? Come on, do you believe that this morning? If you're normal has you more focused on fear rather than faith, then it's time to allow God to flip that normal upside down. If your new normal has you looking inward instead of upward, then it's time to flip that normal upside down. If your normal has you walking in circles instead of living in his promises, church, then it's time to flip that normal upside down today. If your normal has you more concerned about your preferences instead of his presence today, then it's time to flip that normal upside down. I believe God is shaking things up and getting ready to do something incredible, something only he can do. I believe God is getting ready to do something here in the heartland that's going to impact this nation spiritually. I believe God is going to pour out his spirit. Pastor, why here? Why us? Because we're at the center of it all. When we came to Heartland Worship Center four years ago, as we drove home that weekend after being voted in, we passed the sign that said geographical uh, center of the United States in Lebanon. And God immediately put something on my heart that it might appear that the church is in the middle of nowhere, but truly we are at the heart of everything. I believe change is coming to the heart. I believe revival is coming to the heart. It has to start in the heart.
are we going to settle for normal? Or are we willing to take the step? That's both for the church, but also for us personally today. Are we going to settle for normal? Or are we going to take the step that God is leading us to take today? It means that we have to trust him. It means that we have to put preference aside. We have to stop looking at comfort and convenient and all these different things. It means that we have to embrace the word today. Trust in God and take the step. I want us to close our eyes, bow our heads across this place. I want to start personally today. You have felt your normal rocked shaken life is you're doing all that you can to keep it together maybe fear has been in the driver's seat maybe your attempt to bring everything back together has has been your focus God wants to realign your focus today He wants to help you in this season, but you've got to be willing to look to him and say, okay, God, I trust you. You're bigger than this. We have to let faith lead the way. But I want to pray today with those who might be feeling unsettled, for those that might be, maybe you have found yourself longing for normal, for things to kind of settle down. And in the restlessness, you've been grabbing at all these different things. Today, it's time to grab a hold of God. It's time to grab a hold of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. You'd say, you know what, Pastor, remember me today in prayer. My normal has been shaken. My life feels like it's upside down. But today, today I want to find that security in Jesus. I want to find that stability in Jesus. If that's you, just raise your hand right where you're at for a moment so I can see. Is there anybody here today that would say, pray for me? Amen. Anybody else today? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, you see the hands. More importantly, you know the hearts. Holy Spirit, I pray that you begin to speak to these souls today. I pray that you would begin to lead God, comfort them, guide them right now. I pray the next step they take is a step of faith into the promises that you have lying ahead for them. God, speak peace to their hearts right now. Comfort their souls. Guide them and direct them as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I can't tell you everything that's ahead. But I can tell you that God has great things ahead. I can't tell you what it's all going to look like. But I can tell you it's going to bring glory to his name. I can't tell you that we have enough power or resource to make it happen. But I can tell you that our God does today. Is the work that is ahead beyond us? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am but be strong and courageous for God is going to go with us every step of the way. Will you cross the river with me today? Man, it's almost scary to put those words out there. Will you cross the river with me today? Will you choose 
to join me in the commitment. Not my will, your will be done. Stand to your feet if you'd make that commitment with me this morning. And let's put our hands in the air. Why do we put our hands in the air? It's the universal sign for surrender. God, I give you all. I give you all today. Heavenly Father, we today as a church, we today as individuals, make that commitment to follow you, to follow you by faith, by the leading of your spirit, by your hand, God, by what you are able to do. We surrender all to you this morning. We give all to you this morning. And Lord, we look forward to the promises that are ahead. And God, we understand that this might require a little bit of change. We understand that it might require a little bit of adjustment. But Lord, so long as we know that you are with us every step of the way, we will be strong. We will be courageous. We will go up and take the land that you have called us to possess. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Holy Spirit, for your empowerment today upon this church. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would empower our witness, that you would empower our testimony. And God, as we get ready to go through these doors, that even today we would begin, God, to spread your light in a dark world, to speak faith in a culture so crippled by fear. God, to lead the way. God, to lead the way. The way back to you. Bless this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.